welcome back uh, to another Hush Life vlog. Uh, I've been a little MIA the last couple weeks and uh, the rest of the crew has been holding down the fort, getting out and doing some fun spring activities as the, uh, the winter months finally change into the spring months, or at least allegedly. But I uh, figured I'd give a little bit of an update. Um, you know, over the years, we have kind of prided ourselves on showing the good times in life and also some of the challenging times in life. And the uh, last couple of weeks have been a little bit more on the challenging side for my wife and I. Um, many of you that have watched the channel for a lot of years know that we uh, we have had a, a yellow yellow lab, our our, uh, our 13 year old yellow lab, Deucey boy. In September, he got ill, found out he had cancer, and kind of out of the blue, he was doing really great, super healthy, and then just got progressively sicker. So certainly had an impact on my fall plans. Um, but it did give us some more time, but unfortunately uh, we had to make the really difficult decision to uh, to put him down the last about two weeks ago now and uh, man If you've ever had a dog that you loved uh, It was your bird dog your your best friend then you obviously know you know how difficult that decision is uh, to make so he's a uh, been with us for a lot of years and a lot of life and unfortunately his um his illness just got to a point where we couldn't really do much more we we threw the kitchen sink at it we gave him a lot of pretty much did everything we could uh we, we got some exceptional veterinary care here in salt lake city um at medvet their oncology department was incredible the people were fantastic so we're appreciative about that but anyways we miss him like crazy it's been a rough two weeks, a lot of tears. It's crazy how much uh, grief you can feel through the loss of a dog. Unfortunately, such is life. So you gotta like, we're doing our best to celebrate the good times we had with them. Remember like what he brought to our family and uh, really just trying to surround ourselves with our family and our friends and stay busy, just trying to stay busy. So um, with the help of Maddie Lee, Maddie Ice, put together a little memorial for our buddy Deuce. So we'll be, we'll be better. We'll get through it. It's gonna take some time, but I know the coming weeks we're gonna stay busy. We're gonna go do fun stuff. And uh, at some point in the near future, when the time is right, we'll go find ourselves another Labrador to add to our family. And although they'll never fill the same hole that he left in our in our lives. Um, he'll provide a lot of love and fun times for a new opportunity. Anyways, guys, uh, that's what's been going on. Hopefully, we'll be able to share a lot of fun adventures moving forward. But thought I'd give you an update, and I hope you enjoy the little piece we put together. You joined our family on the 14th of March, 2010, and you left this world the 24th of February, 2022, finally gaining your permanent angel wings that adorned your back since you were just a puppy. Those two light-colored markings graced your shoulders your entire life, even as you grew older and battled cancer these past five months. 13 incredible years doesn't seem like nearly enough as we try and process what you meant to the both of us now that you are gone. Our house feels empty and silent. Our hearts broken and hollow as our family of three transitions to one of just two. As we confront our grief and move forward with life, we're also reflecting on how grateful we are to have had such a wonderful dog for all these years. The best surprise I ever received was rounding the corner after a long day of fishing to a 12-week-old yellow lab puppy. Your two distinct wings, those soft oversized ears, greeted me with big tail wags and lots of love. We didn't know it on that first day, but it was the beginning of the best 13 years of our lives. You've been beside us for so many life's celebrations, challenges, and setbacks. From being newlyweds to when I got fired in 2010, to mom's big promotions and a huge move to Utah. You spent countless hours at my feet, curled up under my desk as I had transitioned away from corporate America and into being an entrepreneur. Working from home certainly has its perks and more time spent with you was no doubt number one. The past two years were challenging in many ways, 
but we spent so much time together living our best life. The unconditional support you provided while mom transitioned careers, felt lonely in a new city, or the days I was traveling was a blessing. You knew exactly what she needed when she needed it. She spoiled you rotten, loved you more than anything possible, and gave you her whole heart. Up on her bed, snuggled on the couch, or lying on the floor, I can't even count the number of days you guys slept side by side in sickness and in health. You were her best friend, and she sacrificed so much to keep you healthy as you felt ill. You depended on her, but man did she depend on you. We drove cross country chasing birds, fished in beautiful waters, took endless walks in Central Oregon, ran wild at Cannon Beach, and even stayed in a van down by a river. You loved adventure, were an exceptional bird dog, and yet had the sweetest heart of any lab I've ever had. Later in life, you loved our walks, the treats from the pantry, and lots of affection. More than anything, I'm gonna miss our hugs. Every morning and every night, you'd sit down, rest your muzzle on our shoulder, and give us that big hug. With just the tip of your tail wagging on the carpet, had you scooch just a little closer into our chest. The emptiness we felt with infertility was always eased because of you. Even without a child, we had our family and you gave us something outside of each other to love and care for. These last months were hard. We fought like hell and we gave you everything we had. Although it was difficult, our additional time together allowed us to have no regrets to say I love you a million more times and you just take one day at a time. When the day finally arrived to say goodbye, we wanted you to be comfortable, not scared. Your beautiful brown eyes told us you had no more fight left in your body, even though your mind and spirit were strong. In our home with music playing, the fire burning, we each lay beside you, soothing those velvety soft ears, offering endless kisses and the comforting touch we know you'd love. As you settled into a deep sedation, we could see the pain ease away as we held you close until your final breath. The most handsome lab until the very end. To know you was to love you, from grandparents to nephews, friends and neighbors, you made everyone happy. Thank you for everything you gave us, for the way you made us feel, and for the endless love that runs deep through our souls. We miss you like crazy. Love you so much, big guy. What's up, guys? Welcome to my portion of the vlog, and welcome to sunny Salt Lake City. Got some special guests at the house today. B Mac and Matt are down here working on a Can Am. You tor torquing wrenches, B Mac? Uh, no, I'm supervising. That's what Matt's for. <laughs> he torques some wrenches, don't let him. I got a couple of torques in, you know? Oh man, so we got a new roof, huh? Yeah, we got the new roof on. Let's go take a look at this thing. So we've been adding some accessories on this for quite a while as the accessories come in. Uh, we just got a new rooftop. So that's a two-piece rooftop, right? Two-piece roof, and uh, we got it all secured. Now we got this back glass. We got to throw the headache rack back in, and then the bed rack back in. And now we're discussing whether or not we should add a couple more roof racks here. The ones that we have in the garage? Yeah. Debating on the roof rack on top of the rooftop, huh? Yeah, so I think we're at the stage now where we don't really want to add too much more additional weight and do too many more things. For the two new roof racks, we'd have to cut through the new plastic roof and drill some holes in the frame. So we're kind of probably holding off on that for a minute. And we'll have those roof racks if we ever feel like, man, I wish we just had a little more storage. Dude, this is gonna be the storage machine, especially with this double decker. It's mostly just a tool to get from like base camp to where we want to go hunt. And then we're blasting off from there, whether it's shed hunting or turkey hunt or elk hunt or whatever but it's coming along 
I like it, man. It's looking good. Yeah. It's what's clutch is having the rear windshield, the front windshield, and then we have to go pick up one more tool to get the side wind deflectors on the front over here. And uh, it just makes a huge difference in not getting like the dust spinning back up into the cab. And obviously when it's cold out, like, we didn't have any of that last year, so it was a little chilly on some morning rides for sure. Matt's got all the tools. Yeah, do you want to put the, the is this the adventure rack? Uh, yes. The adventure rack. Throw they it have back like on. three roof racks called the adventure rack, I think. You throwing a decal up? Yeah, dude. <laughs> we need some hush stickers. No, we don't. We want to go dude, incognito. Incognito. No hush. Stickers. We always say that. People know what we got though. Yeah, branded. The uh, spring weather sure is coming on strong. I think it's officially spring in like three or four days, isn't it? Yeah, March 20th. March 20th, it'll be springtime. Yes, you know what that means. Spring bear, some turkey, fishing, shed hunting. I heard uh, Congress just actually worked together and did something. They passed a new law that uh, daylight savings will be uh, different in 2023 if it moves through the uh, Senate. Does that mean, hopefully we have longer days in the yes. winter? Yes. Dude, winter days that get dark at 445, like, are brutal. Absolutely. Alaska, oh, man, the people up in Alaska that you guys have darkness, like, most of the day, I don't know how you guys do it. All right, those guys have left me all alone in this empty house, and uh, I'm just in the office. Before I tell you about the little video series I'm working on, I'm curious if you guys notice a... A difference in the picture quality on my portion of the vlog. I'm using a new Sony. I think Matt did a portion of the vlog where he's talking about cameras and I got a new vlog camera and so far so good. Um, I'm kind of like a leaving on automatic instead of messing with all the settings. But if you guys think it does a good job, let me know in the comment section. My last one was this Canon. This is the G7X Mark III. And if you watch our channel consistently, you've probably heard and seen me complain about the focal capabilities of this camera. It would constantly focus on the background and not my face. So this one, from what I can tell on the screen, you know, seems to keep a pretty good focal point. So that's kind of the goal of switching over to this Sony is its ability to focus on my face. I'm in the office and I'm just getting done editing and uploading the first episode of our Mexico Old Mexico series, which starts with coos deer and then bass and then muleys. So episode one is sweet. If you guys have missed it, it's on the channel already. It's in the video tab. Episode one is 30 minutes long. And in my opinion, for anyone who is curious what it's like to go hunt coos deer in Mexico or even muleys, like we're not hunting mule deer, but I'm sure it'd be very similar, at least with the outfit we went with. This is a good series to watch. And I kind of show the house, show a little bit of everything. If you missed it, go back, check it out. And uh, if you're watching this on Monday, um, the last and final episode will come out on Thursday. And then after that, it's gonna be bass fishing. Those guys went down and absolutely destroyed largemouth bass. Got a ton of hookups on film. So that'll be a fun series too. But this is kind of the setup. Besides a giant mess I have of like papers and notes and like taxes and mail. Um, this is just kind of my little office. I don't spend a lot of time in here because my habit is to like edit and work on the kitchen table. So I'm trying to like change my habits and work in an office space. I thought I would enjoy the shop, which I really do, but I have bad Wi-Fi out there. So this is kind of my setup right now. But I think uh, if I get a chance, I'm going to clean it up, organize it, and uh, just like brighten it up a little bit with some decor, maybe even a mount or two. I've got a lot of wall space. Okay guys, before I wrap up my portion of the vlog, last thing I wanted to do was unbox my new Hoyt bow. Um, the bow I originally ordered, I guess, is gonna be back ordered for left-handed. So I decided to shoot um, a Ventum Pro 30. This is the buckskin color. Uh, I'm pulling out of the box for the full time, you guys, or for the first time, you guys can see it's uh, sealed. So let's pull this sucker out and take a look. I'm excited. <laughs> Let's see this thing, oh man. I'm excited, archery season. Man, it comes so quick. Between the time I get my bow, set it up, and August comes around, it always feels like, damn, I just barely got this bow. But this year, I got a little earlier, which is gonna be nice. I'll have a second to get it set up and uh, tuned up. Look at that, baby. Whew. 
take a look at that baby. Now I'm not your guy when it comes to specs and you know all the little things. All I know is that feels dang good. It feels so well balanced even out of the box. So guys, this is the bow I'm gonna be shooting first and foremost. Um, excited to get it set up. You guys know that we typically always do our bow setups with the team at Wild Arrow. So you can count on doing, um, getting some bow build videos here on the channel, hopefully sooner than later. I know the guys with the right handed um, always seem to get their bows first, so you guys will probably expect to see those. But I am uh, left eye dominant. I know I've said this in some videos, but people think I'm left handed. I'm not, I'm right handed, I kick with my right foot. But I am left eye dominant, which, you know, is the reason why I shoot a lefty bow. So there's probably a lot of people like that out there. If you're like that, let me know um, in the comment section. But I'm excited to shoot this baby, and I can't believe that hunting season is going to be coming quick. All righty, guys. So I got a call from my buddy Braden. You guys know him. Uh, this morning, saying that one of the big bucks that we hunted this summer and we watched quite a bit this winter, he found dead. So that's pretty unfortunate, but it's kind of all makes sense because Braden and I had our eyes on this buck like most winter and then he just disappeared like probably two or three weeks before he was about to shed. And uh, so he brought him up to my house. He waited for the game warden. Game warden and him had some discussions and took some photos and video and he got the clear to take it. So he brought it up to me and I want to show it to you guys. Dang, he's dude. just small, and it's crazy because I have a shed off this buck two years ago too. That's the cool part. Look as, at that thing. Do the back like as he's walking away. Back, dude. That's look at thing. that. He's so wide, and it's a lion kill. Yeah, his look whole at face. the side of his face. I know that's pretty gnarly. Yeah. Look at the Roman nose on this deer. So we he know this deer is at so least old. what seven? Oh, probably more, dude. Seven or eight that we've been watching him. Because even on the winter range, I've been seeing him for three, four years straight. Yeah. Oh yeah, I want to see how wide he is. From main beam to main beam, widest point is the official. So oh, he's really not that 25, wide. but then huh. his farthest outside is that what? like G2 probably. Yeah. Yeah, over 30. Yeah. So for any guys that know how to score, in order to get their inside spread uh, for scoring them, it's the farthest point on the main beam, but then just... Most people, when they say it's like a 30-inch buck, measure the widest point. So a lot of times, those 30-inch bucks have big cheaters that are six yep. or seven inches. Exactly. But this is just straight up. Yes. Yeah, hold that right there. Look at that, guys. He's just big. That's a big deer. I'll overlay some phone scope footage that myself and Braden has got of this buck over the last couple of years. Just flipping giant. And then he found a couple other brown sheds. This buck was is an up-and-comer. It's yep. uh, one that we watched this winter as well. Yep. Brain just went up and cleaned up. Yeah, it just literally 30 yards from each other. Look at this deer's teeth, too. Like He's old. Old deer. Cope, come here. It's unfortunate that we weren't able to harvest this deer ourselves and uh, take care of all the meat. And it's unfortunate that we won't have this buck to look forward to chasing this year. But at least somebody who spent as much time as Braden watching this deer is able to take him into enjoy them and funny enough Braden actually does your Euro european mounts yes yeah, so i'll just clean it up i think it'd be sweet if he cleans it up and keeps it all torn sure. up like a like the lion what the lion did to him so well dude thanks for bringing that yeah, over of course dude super rad and i hope you guys enjoyed that little segment and uh yeah comment below how old you think this deer is i'm gonna go back and try and find the oldest video clip i have of this deer i think it was like 2013 or dude, 2014 so long ago. we've watched this deer for a minute so uh Thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you on the next one.